episode of Off The Script Extra! Everything you guys need to know about tonight's Fastlane pay-per-view. Let's talk about it. J.D. from New York, 206, it's Hopper Off The Script, Big Show and Ryback, Strawman and Roman, get off my fucking TV, save me the misery, and all you fucking goons, just grab a cold beer, the man of the hour is finally here, J. What is going on guys? JD from New York here. Thank you so much for tuning back into the channel on this Fast Lane Sunday, March 5th, 2017. In this video, we're going to go over everything that has just been leaked for Fast Lane, man. So if you guys don't want to hear the spoilers, then you guys know what to do. Click off the video and uh, I'm pretty sure everybody wants to know what's going on because you, me, and everybody else... With a Monday Night Raw pay-per-view, we know it is going to be the same generic bullshit that we see each and every fucking week. And for the most part, Fastlane is quite predictable in its own right. So, you might as well stick it with me and hear a God-honest good opinion for Fastlane. I want to thank everybody that has supported the channel all weekend, man, off the script, as always, fucking a blast to do, part three is live on the channel right now, make sure you guys go and check that out if you missed it, according to WWE plans, five title changes will occur at WrestleMania 33, some may piss you off, one of them does indeed include Bray Wyatt losing the WWE Championship to Randy Orton, but that is all speculation at this stage of the game. Remember, we only have four weeks left to go to WrestleMania, so plans change constantly with Vince McMahon. And <laughs> the only thing that doesn't change is my diet of wood. <laughs> so, you guys know. You guys know. But I want to thank everybody for doing it into the show today for Off The Script Extra. Uh, always sponsored by Audible. AudibleTrial.com slash off the script. Audible's giving everybody listening and watching today 30 days free to try the service out. That includes one free audiobook compatible with iPhone and Android. Over 180,000 books to choose from. Take advantage of this right now, man. Daniel Bryan, Shawn Michaels, Chris Jericho, Mick Foley, even a pre order for AJ Lee's new book, Crazy Is My Superpower. Coming out in April. That's audibletrial.com slash off the script. I want to thank everybody that has signed up already so far. We had 94 signups in February. We already have 14 for March, man. Let's keep it going. I want to beat that 94 number this month for Audible Trial. Let's get into the video, man. I got a lot of news. I want to thank my, my good friend, Brett527 on Twitter. Brett R. At five, uh, oh, let me let me let me do that all over again. At Brett R five two seven, I'm a fucking goon, motherfucker. He comes with me with exclusive news. This is coming right from Richard Gray of Wrestling News World. Uh, Brett actually hit me up just a little bit ago. I gotta make a video on it, man, because a lot of this stuff is going to occur, according to their sources over at Wrestling News World tonight at Fastlane. Let's start off with this. They are getting some early news for what's set for Fastlane at this hour. Remember, in WWE, things can always change. So please, do not take what is said here to, you know, to the grave, okay? Take everything. Always, 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 when it comes to Vince McMahon, with a pinch of salt, especially during WrestleMania season. It can boil down to a last few minute decisions. As always with Vince McMahon, nothing is set in stone. This is what they're hearing right now. Neville is set to retain the Cruiserweight Championship against Jack Gallagher. No word on if it'll be clean or a dirty finish. We all kind of knew that going in. There's absolutely no reason to take the title off Neville right now. Jack Gallagher is going to... 
be a nice little fun match for Neville before he eventually goes on to WrestleMania. And what I think is going to happen, being that the IC title is going to be between Ambrose and Corbin, the US title looking like it's going to be between Jericho and Owens, being that Owens is set to lose the title tonight to Goldberg. Um, I honestly think the Cruiserweights either got one of two options. One, we get a Neville versus Aries match, or... Aries is in a multi-man match with Neville, and we get a six-man ladder match for the Cruiserweight Championship. I think that's where they're going with this. Pretty much, It pretty much makes no sense at all not to do the Cruiserweight ladder match, being that we've seen the ladder match such a staple at WrestleMania. Uh, following the departure of Money in the Bank, it's been used for the IC title. I think that is going to go to the Cruiserweight Championship this year. Nia Jax is set to go over Sasha Banks again. Uh, in a match that is going to have a surprising amount of time. Less time than the women's championship match, but still Nia and Sasha are going to get a good chunk of time. Nia makes sense beating Sasha again. This plays up to the entire heel run that is being proposed right now for Sasha Banks to turn on Bailey. Nia Jax, you have to have a reason for her to look good because you want to include her in the women's match right now, which is being proposed as a fatal four-way for the Raw Women's Championship at WrestleMania. Completely makes sense for Nia Jax to go over Sasha Banks. You could build up Sasha Banks as the underdog babyface trying to come back against the monstrous Nia Jax, but in the end, Nia will go over Sasha once again, and it does make sense for Nia to win if you are going to include her in the title match at WrestleMania. you got to give her some momentum. Gallows and Anderson are going to go over Enzo and Cass. Again, this makes sense. Uh, Gallows and Anderson just won the titles at the Royal Rumble on the pre-show from Sheamus and Cesaro. Enzo and Cass look like, you know, they're a bunch of bumbling fools. There's some dissension going on there. Enzo is a little bit too jovial. He's a little bit too, uh, uh, you know, clown-like. You know, Cass is a lot more serious. Maybe they both get on the same page, get their heads together, go into WrestleMania, and take the titles from Gallows and Anderson then, but right now... No sense to take the titles off of Gallows and Anderson, and I do believe we will see a rematch at WrestleMania. This is something that a lot of people are predicting, and I hope this really does not come true and that WWE has another way around things. Charlotte is set to go over Bayley and win back the Women's Championship. The match is set to be a fairly long one with Charlotte prevailing in the end. Uh, you guys know how I feel about this. Bailey should have never won the title to begin with. If you wanted to have Charlotte with the championship, you know, still, I don't know why you took it off of her. You know, again, this lends, you know, to the whole thing that Charlotte is the queen of pay-per-view. I, I mean, you're making the, the streak of pay-per-view, which is fucking a fake streak, okay? Just like Solomon just says, Ric Flair's a, got a fake fucking title, you know, title reign 16 times. It's a fucking fake record. This is a fake fucking streak. I hate this shit. Charlotte should be at least a two-time champion. She should be running through women left and right. She should be. She should assert her dominance through uh, a lengthy title reign. Nobody can take the belt off of her. Meanwhile, you still build the streak up. You understand where I'm going with that? You know, Bailey ruined the WrestleMania moment on Monday Night Raw by winning the championship. There's nothing for her to fight for now, honestly. I mean, you, you built up this storyline where she's like, oh my God, I dreamt about being a WWE superstar. I dreamt about winning the Women's Championship. So you give it to her on a Monday Night Raw episode and not at WrestleMania? I don't understand this. And then with the bullshit that we've seen with Stephanie McMahon, where she felt like Bayley won the championship in a fuck finish with Sasha's interference, you know, you should have took the title off of her to build sympathy, give it back to Charlotte so we don't get another title reign on Charlotte. It's like they're making an excuse for Charlotte to break her father's fucking record in the women's division. It's bullshit. Absolutely bullshit. So Charlotte is set to go over Bailey and win the championship back. I don't care how good the match is. I don't care how long the match is. The match, honestly, shouldn't be uh, going in Charlotte's favor again for a fifth title reign. It should have been Bailey the challenger fighting Charlotte the champion and you build sympathy on Bailey as the babyface underdog going into WrestleMania where she would eventually take Charlotte's streak. Charlotte, though, is set to go over Bailey tonight, and uh, the complaints and the saltiness is going to ensue again after Fastlane, as always, with the women's division. This is surprising, and I kind of I kind of figured this. Uh, Braun. Braun Strowman is set to go over Roman Reigns in a match that will be given a decent amount of time. These two could actually have the match of the night if they give them a decent amount of time. The ending 
is rumored to be The Undertaker coming out to either cause a distraction or a direct interference, costing Roman the match. This will start the build to WrestleMania between Roman and The Undertaker. Now, I can't see Roman losing. I just can't see Roman losing going into WrestleMania. I propose the idea or a booking scenario of Roman is about to take down the giant. Superman punch, Superman punch, Superman punch. Roman's setting up to do the spear. The lights go out. Instead of Roman, you know, standing there looking at Braun Strowman, when the lights come out, uh, instead of Braun Strowman, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be The Undertaker. So he's going to go to spear The Undertaker. He's going to meet a big boot. Undertaker's going to fucking choke slam him, tombstone. But Roman's going to win by disqualification. That way you make Roman look strong by toppling the giant and trying to overcome the giant, coming this close to victory. And then Braun Strowman, obviously, you would build him up uh, during the match. He would not be taking a pinfall loss. You can build up both men as strong. Meanwhile, The Undertaker gets his revenge for getting eliminated by Roman in the Royal Rumble. That's the way I do it, but according to Richard Gray and Wrestling News World, Braun Strowman is set to go over Roman Reigns, which I do think is one of those situations that it might change last minute. But right now, Braun Strowman is set to go over Roman Reigns tonight at Fastlane. Samoa Joe is set to go over Sami Zayn in a match with a good amount of time allotted for it. This is good news for Sami fans. Uh, while he won't be going over, he will be uh, made to look good by holding his own against Joe, who has pretty much dominated the WWE roster since being on Monday Night Raw. Even though Joe is new to the scene, and I mean new, loosely, WWE acknowledges that he is already, uh, you know, one of those guys that has a big fight feel to him. There is an interesting twist that, that will have fans interested, though. The word going around is that Joe might continue with a post-match beating, and Finn Balor will come out to make the save. There is a chance they'll... Push this back to tomorrow on Raw, but it seems that WWE is confident Rollins will make WrestleMania in some capacity, which frees up Finn Balor to go one-on-one -on -one with Samoa Joe at WrestleMania. That is very interesting, and some of you guys actually proposed that idea as well, that Sami Zayn, he's the perfect role for that underdog, man. He's going to hold his own. He's going to come this close to beating Joe. Joe's going to overcome him, as always, because he's the destroyer. And Samoa Joe, being that he's such a fucking dominant entity, he's going to beat down Sami Zayn because he can at the end of the match. Out comes Finn Balor for the save. We could see some tag team matches go back and forth. Maybe we see Owens and Joe versus Zayn and Balor. Maybe we see uh, a couple of matches mixed in between those four guys. But it looks like we're going to get Joe versus Balor at WrestleMania. And I don't think anybody's going to have a problem with that because they had a decent feud in NXT. Now that they're both on the main roster, you add WrestleMania to that feud. Uh, I think we're, uh, we're being treated to a nice little matchup there at WrestleMania, man. So that's going to be very interesting to see. And this is going to be the one match I'm looking forward to most tonight at Fastlane, being that I'm such a big fan of both Joe and Sami Zayn. Bad news for Kevin Owens fans. Goldberg is set, no shit, to go over Owens fairly quickly. Not Brock Lesnar type fast, but still pretty quickly. WWE still has concerns about Goldberg wrestling a full match, even though the feeling is Owens could get a good match out of him if WWE wanted. Uh, being that this is being reported as fairly quickly, uh, everything that I've read so far is going to have a decent amount of time slotted for it. Charlotte's match with Bailey, Sami Zayn versus Samoa Joe going to have a, a lot of time. Reigns and Strowman going to have a lot of time. So they're going to compensate for the three-hour show while this match ends in about five minutes. I don't see this going over ten. Uh, I don't see it going, uh, you know, 90 seconds like uh, like Le Lesnar and Goldberg at some, uh, Survivor Series, but still, it's going to end pretty fast with a pretty predictable ending. Uh, WWE has uh, feelings about Goldberg wrestling a full match. Owens could bring a good match out of him. Vince also doesn't want to give away the farm, meaning he doesn't want to give away too much at a B-level pay-per-view with Goldberg. He'd rather save it for WrestleMania. He wants to save his full potential for Orlando. So you guys should know about that already. There's no surprise there. We discussed this on the preview and prediction show. We discussed it leading up to this pay-per-view. You guys know what is coming. Do not be shocked when you see Goldberg win the championship at Fastlane. Vince is beyond down on the Cruiserweight division. Uh, if he had a big enough roster for Monday Night Raw and the three hours that is Raw, they would be down to one segment only. He feels none of them can get over and that fans don't care. The fans don't care because you don't care. It's not fucking rocket science. The fans don't care because of the way Raw treated them. I'm not going to go over this anymore. 
If you treated them the way Regal and Triple H and everybody affiliated with the Cruiserweight Classic treated them on Monday Night Raw, instead of hampering them down with two-minute matches and fucking six-man tags every week, I think we would care. I've said it time and time again. There's no way you can take Kota Ibushi and Cedric Alexander, you take that match from the Cruiserweight Classic and you put that in a main event slot on Monday Night Raw. There's no way those guys are not getting over. You didn't give them the respect that they garnered from the Cruiserweight Classic and you treated it as if it was nothing. So that's the reason why they failed. And Vince McMahon is blaming the division. Meanwhile, he should be blaming himself. Kevin Dunn should be blaming himself. The fucking producers and all entities, you know, with Monday Night Raw should be blaming themselves. If we take a look at this, there is a multitude of reasons why the Cruiserweight division is not working. And let's be honest, it's not. It's not working because WWE doesn't want it to work. They don't want it to work. They don't care for it to work. Simple as that. Well, they never spent any time slowly introducing the characters. Everyone got lost in the shuffle. Then, when they tried to develop characters, it was too late. Their matches do not get enough time to showcase and tell stories. And their style has been toned down greatly. Again, everything that I just said. 205 Live is filmed in a death spot after SmackDown in front of an audience whom have been sitting on their ass for over two hours now. You know, they already seen the Wyatts and the Ambroses and the Ortons and this one and that one. Why are they going to stay and watch a fucking Brian Kendrick? Or why are they going to stay and watch an Akira Tozawa? Nobody fucking cares. Especially when it's a Tuesday night and you got work in the morning and the kids got school. Who's going to sit there and watch those guys? You're not. Plain and simple. Plus, the fans in attendance have already seen the big stars that they paid to see and are ready to go home at that point. It's trying to serve a salad after dessert. Most people don't want it. What worked for the Cruiserweight Classic was the in-ring work and match quality in front of die-hard fans. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. The best thing that they can do for the Cruiserweight division is move 205 Live to Full Sail University, where NXT is held, and we definitely discussed that on Off the Script. The fan base there would be much more receptive to the Cruiserweights, and having a crowd that is made up of regulars will do wonders for the crowd reaction. Having big reactions will build fan base. It, it, it's got to be done. It's got to be done. So the fan base there would be much more receptive to the Cruiserweights. You know, there's the, 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 the Full sale crowd would be so much more loving to them. Having big reactions will build fan interest, and the division will start to correct its course from the fucking miserable state that it's in right now on Monday Night Raw. There is at least talk of turning Roman Reigns heel at WrestleMania versus The Undertaker, and while we know it's long overdue, everybody knows it's long overdue, the thought process is more long-term and trying to level out the top heels and faces headed into the next draft. If that were the case, we'd have top faces as Rollins, Finn Balor, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Randy Orton, and the top heels being Kevin Owens, Roman Reigns, Braun Strowman, AJ Styles, Bray Wyatt, and Samoa Joe, with John Cena and Brock as extra part-time faces. One of the issues, however, is the officials aren't as stubborn about turning AJ as some might think. They know how over he is, and they wouldn't mind him being the number one face on a show, if they have to, but they are trying to keep him heel as long as they can. As for the actual draft... The plan is to not redraft the entire uh, rosters, both for Raw and SmackDown, but they would be doing something along the lines of each show having a certain number of picks that they, that they can take from the other show and NXT, with champions not eligible to be drafted, and each GM can protect a certain number of workers. They will be planning out the draft for a while to make sure the rosters are even, and they work to maximize fan interest and long-term depth on each show. You got to work on the women's division for Raw. You got to work on the tag team division for both shows. You got to work on the cruiserweight division, moving that, which we discussed, down to Full Sail University and making its own entity. Take them off Raw. Take them off 205 Live. Get rid of that shit. Put them in front of Full Sail, and that's it. You can have 205 Live on Wednesdays after NXT. Tape it, film it there, and it'll be a lot better. But as far as the draft goes, you guys know how I feel about this. If all the women were on one brand, and all the tag teams were on another brand, it would even things out for the shows. It really would. You would have a legit division in the women. You would have a legit division in the tag teams. How many women are you using on Raw? Three, regularly. Now they're just starting to use Nia Jax. But before that, how many months has she sat absent, waiting for something of an opportunity to come along? 
just now for WrestleMania. How many women are you using on SmackDown? You're using your five, six women. You take the six women with the three that you're using on Monday Night Raw. Ed Nia Jax, you got nine, ten women. Four is, uh, you know, a, a division on Monday Night Raw the way you look at it. Ten is better than four. So that's the way I'm looking at it. How many tag teams do you use on Monday Night Raw? You're using three teams right now. Sheamus and Cesaro, which I don't see together all that much longer anyway. I would break them up and have them go their separate ways. So that would be three with the New Day, Enzo and Cass, and the club. How many teams do you use on SmackDown? You got about three or four teams that you use over there regularly, right? And you got a bonus in the Ascension and the Fashion Police and this and that. You, you break away the Fashion Police, you put Ty, uh, T Tyler Breeze on his own, give him his old gimmick back, keep him on SmackDown in the mid-card. Fandango could be a great mid-card guy on SmackDown. You would have seven or eight teams. Eight teams is better than fucking three teams on Monday Night Raw. You get where I'm going with that? Of course you do. I've been stating it since last year's draft. The women should be on Raw. The tag team should be on SmackDown. No questions asked. Simple as that. That fixes your whole fucking draft. And then you could draft accordingly after that. Who you want to go to SmackDown, who you want to be on Raw. It makes things a lot easier. And you build two divisions up at the same fucking time. That's what I'm talking about. And uh, what, what else we got here? We got one more story here, TNA news, but, uh, I mean, who gives a shit about those guys? Jeff Jarrett, back in power at Impact Wrestling, now bringing in Bruce Pritchard back to help him run the company. Jeff is also looking to bring in as many wrestlers from Global Force Wrestling as possible. With so many recent departures from Impact, Hardys, you got Mike Bennett, Drew Galloway leaving, Maria Kanellis, you got Rebby Sky, and all of Matt Hardy's camp. They're looking to bring in Global Force Wrestling, uh, wrestlers as much as possible with so many recent departures from Impact with more still to come. There are going to be several roster spots open for his own political protection. Jarrett is pushing to fill those spots with friends and GFW talent to make sure he has more guys and women on the roster that are allies and that will be loyal to him. He's pushing hard right now to bring Magnus back as well as Sanjay Dutt Sanjay is actually trying to get a job with WWE right now, but if he doesn't get signed by WWE, he's told Jeff that he wants to return to Impact Wrestling. Speaking of TNA, Matt Morgan is headed back to TNA as a headliner with a new management uh, behind him in Anthem Sports. Matt is down to 286 pounds of all muscle and has been working out rigorously uh, in bodybuilding contests. Something that we discussed on Off The Script. Jarrett is looking for a more professional approach to TNA. He's looking for a more, a more direct approach. Going to surround himself with glorified yes-men who are going to be loyal to him. They're going to be looking at building that product up with familiar faces from the past. Don't necessarily know how well that's going to go over, but I said this. TNA will not succeed unless you sign a megastar and a Daniel Bryan or a CM Punk or someone at that level. Nobody is going to tune in to see what these guys are doing now after all the damage that's been done. Nobody's going to tune into their shows to see a Del Rio or a Matt Morgan or a this one and that one. Nobody's going to tune into TNA. Okay, Those guys do not have the long-term impact that you need to build a company around. It's not going to happen. They're doing it because they have nothing else... Uh, to do. They got to keep the company afloat. They got new management. They got new owners. They got to they gotta show something. They got to show some type of effort in bringing this thing back from where it's been. And they want to go a more serious, direct uh, way to give you guys uh, a serious wrestling product. That might be great. You can't blame them for that. But they're not going to build this company around and it's not going to be taken to the next level with guys like that that they got right now with Del Rio. And you know they're talking about bringing Mysterio back, even Mysterio. No matter how big of a name he is, he's not the type of guy you're going to build a company around. So they're looking at that, and they're looking to surround Jeff Jarrett with yes men. Meanwhile, they need to go out and throw a fucking monstrous contract at CM Punk after he's done with UFC. Bring him in. That's the type of guy you need. You want to watch TNA? How many of you watch TNA if CM Punk is on there? I would, and I know you would too. But that's that. Thank you guys so much. I wanted to get this video out as soon as possible. And that is Off The Script Extra, man. Everything you guys need to know for Fastlane 2017. Tonight, I will be reviewing the show live right here on the channel. Make sure you guys tune in around 12 a.m. The review should be up on the channel. Fastlane review and results. I'm going to do some match simulations as well with my commentary over it. Going to have a good time with Fastlane today, guys. If you enjoyed the video and you learned something from it, hit that thumbs up, man. Always appreciate you guys' support. AudibleTrial.com slash Off The Script. And if you guys want to support... Barbershop window slash off the script. That's barbershopwindow.com slash off the script and patreon.com slash JD from NY two.
06. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys later today with much more content. I'm JD. Hit that thumbs up if you missed off the script. It's in the description down below, and it's live in the annotation that you see on the screen right there. And I'll see you guys later today with more great Fastlane coverage. I'll talk to you later.